From the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello and welcome to another Ropecast. I'm Roger Charlton and today, again, instead of my regular colleague Peter Tischer, uh, Heike is with me. Uh, welcome back, Heike. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about how the word gender has changed its meaning over recent years and getting into more or less the topic of gender studies, which is one of your particular interests. And I, let's start with what seems like a trivial point, but maybe it isn't so trivial. <laughs> when we get um, lists of students who want to attend our courses here in Germany, one of the columns uh, is headed MW, which is the German equivalent of MF, that is male, female. So we are told, supposedly, for each of the people who are going to attend our course, are they male or female? Well... You're going to ask me if that makes any sense? Because <laughs> <laughs> the short answer is no. <laughs> Would you like to explain a little? <laughs> yes, I think... That's probably part of not just a German uh, thing, but like a general sort of human desire to categorize everything that mm. we can, right? To be able to make sense of people. And in order to make sense of someone, you have to know who they are, what they are, and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. In certain kind of situations, that may make sense. But in the example that you just gave, obviously, it's, it, you know, it, it's completely irrelevant, right? Mm. I mean, what does it matter whether the people in front of you are whatever they are, right? Yeah. I mean, what do we care? We we don't, I would hope. Yeah. Well, not only irrelevant, but I mean, this is a binary choice and then it questions whether it really is exactly. a binary choice. Yeah, yeah, it excludes a lot of people um, where it forces people to, you know, take a box that they may not feel that they belong to, yeah. right? Um, and that's, I mean, that's just a very small example, but of course, in a nutshell, that's basically one of the things that we're interested in in, in gender studies. Right. Um, as a general field of research, uh, we like to question which role gender still plays in our everyday lives, in culture, in politics, in sociology, in literature, in arts, um, in language, everything, mm -hmm. basically. So what kind of students do you want to attract to a gender studies course? Well, uh, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> It'd be nice if we had more... Um, Students of the male gender, you can say, if you wanted to stick to that. Um, generally, the people um, who take gender studies courses, I mean, I'm, I'm talking, you know, very generally here, but um, from my experience, most people who are interested in gender studies are women or, you know, belong to the LGBTQI group mm -hmm. um, in the sense that, you know, they may be one gender or the other, or they may be something else um, mm. entirely. So they, def you know, they don't, or they just want to mess with the categories. You know? Right. Um, but generally, I think, uh, sadly, very few men actually take gender mm. studies courses. And right. what about the range of subject areas that people come from? Is it just the humanities or is it wider than that? It's mostly the humanities. Mm. Um, so we only just started this gender studies certificate um, last year. And for now, the, the scope of the courses we're offering uh, is mostly situated in the humanities. Mm. But we're working on that. We, we want to be an, an interdis interdisciplinary um, certificate. And we are. I mean, we include, you know, theology, the different languages. Mm. Um, and we're working on including... Um, the people at Campus Hamburg, right, mm. medicine. Um, it'd be nice to have more people from the psychology department offering courses. Um, law, certainly, that would be mm. an interesting thing. And, I mean, computer sciences, why the hell not? Yes. <laughs> but um, so this, far, it, it's mostly in the humanities. Yeah. And is this going to be worked up into a master's program eventually? or? or um, I think not. No, mm. I think for now we'll stick to, you know, where we are because um, mm. it's kind of difficult. You have to make sure that you always have enough people who can offer courses yes. in that field. Um, and I'm not sure we have the resources mm. as such in terms of people, in terms of time and so on and so forth, because we need to make sure that we cover all the basics as well. Yes. Right. I mean, um, as such, gender is obviously a very specialized sort of. So what are the basics then for those who know nothing about this? <laughs> um, the very basics. 
Um, well, what we talked about in the other podcast we mm. did, right, just understanding what gender is as such the definition right. um, as a p gender as a performative act, right? Yeah. And then um, you would, I think what we want to do is just raise awareness and basically to show people that gender still plays a role in terms of discrimination, in terms of inequality yeah. and so on and so forth. When students um, pick a topic for a presentation or if they write a paper, what kinds of things are they most interested in? Um, it depends. We have a lot of students who are interested in gender neutral language and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, which I find is very important. And it's, it's also groundwork, yes. really, um, you know, in the term, in the sense that language represents knowledge. So it shows, you know, mm. the kind of um, ideas that people still hold, maybe subconsciously about mm. gender. Um, and I think very often it's also in terms of like lots of our students are interested in um, film and television studies. So mm. in that kind of area, it's mostly about how are women represented still, you yes. know, and I mean, Hollywood, obviously. Or in advertising. Or in advertising and in marketing. Yeah. Um, and there is still so much to criticize in that yes. kind of area. Um, so that's one thing I think our students are particularly interested in. And I think in the... Uh, Last couple of semesters, the interest in uh, trans and inter issues has also risen. Mm. So that's something that people are becoming more aware of, which I think is a brilliant development. Okay, well, we'll put a link on our website if people want to find out more. But for today, thank you very much, Heike. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.